Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 8 under the topic state space model. The problem is derive the state variable model for the system shown in figure and this is the given diagram. Right. So this diagram has two masses, one spring and one dash part. And f of t is applied to our mass m2 and the respective displacement due to this force f of t is for m1 the displacement is x1 and for m2 the displacement is x2. Right. So the first step is to draw the free body diagram of mass m1. So when you look at this mass m1 just count how many elements are connected to it. You see 1, 2. Right. So totally there will be three opposing forces right so one is produced by d one is produced by k and another one is produced by this m1 and there is no direct applied force on m1 right so first draw the free body diagram so here these three are the opposing forces right now we are going to write the expression for each and every term here so first consider f m1 so when you look at this fm1 the expression is the opposing force contributed by this fm1 is directly proportional to d square x1 by dt square so when you introduce proportionality constant here it is m1 into d square x1 by dt square right and the next step is d so here d is connected only to the mass m1 so while writing expression the opposing force produced by d is directly proportional to dx1 by dt right so here when you introduce proportionality constant it is given by d into dx1 by dt and the next thing is k so the opposing force produced by this k is given by the difference of x1 minus x2 because here the k is connected between m1 and m2 as we are considering m1 the respective displacement x1 should be returned first so that is why here we are writing x1 minus x2 and which is equal to k into x1 minus x2 right so by newton's second law applied force is equal to opposing force so here there is no applied force so these are all the respective opposing forces so just write it in the form of an equation right next consider free body diagram of mass m2 so here also just count the elements which are connected with m2 so here k and this f of t right so f of t is the applied force and the opposing forces will be produced by this k as well as by this m2 right so there are two opposing forces and one applied force right so while writing expression as usual fm2 is directly proportional to d square x2 by dt square so the proportionality constant is m2 into d square x2 by dt square and the next thing is fk so fk is again directly proportional to here we are considering our mass m2 right so when you are considering m2 the respective displacement x2 should be given first that is x2 should be returned first so here it is x2 minus x1 right and k is the proportionality constant again by newton's law applied force is equal to opposing force here f of t is the applied force and these two are the opposing forces so just substitute the respect to values here and let this be our equation number two now we are framing our state variables so from the diagram we are having two displacements right x1 and x2 so x1 is equal to our this x1 and this x2 is equal to this x2 right and x1 x2 are the state variable and the next thing the first differentiation of x1 is equal to x3 and differentiation of x2 is equal to x4 right now we are rewriting the equations 1 and 2 so this is our equation number 1 so in this equation we are going to replace these terms by the respective state variables so here d square x1 by dt square this can be written as x3 dot right because dx1 by dt is x3 when you again differentiate this term then this x3 is denoted as x3 dot so here m1 x3 dot plus d into this dx1 by dt is nothing but our x3 and finally this 
this x1 is equal to our variable x1 and this x2 is this variable x2. Right. So, just substitute the values here. So, from this expression, we can find the expression for x3 dot. Right. So, just rearrange the terms accordingly. So, when you arrange the terms here, okay, finally, we are having an expression for our x3 dot. Right. So, these are all the simple steps, right? We need only this, that is m1 dot x3 dot. So, I am moving these terms to the left hand side. So, there is a sign change. And next, I am shifting this m1. So, here it is in multiplication. So, here it occupies the denominator part. That's it. And in this step, I had arranged in the order. First x1, then x2 and then x3. Right. That's it. Now, consider equation number 2. Again, right? Just substitute the values accordingly. So, this term is equal to x4 dot and here x2 minus x1. Right. So, again, from this expression, just find out an expression for x4 dot here. Right. So, again, just rearrange the things and finally, this is our expression for x4 dot. Right. Now, just consider the first two things. That is, here x1 is equal to x1, right? Now, just differentiate it. So, when you differentiate, x1 becomes x1 dot and this becomes dx1 by dt. And this dx1 by dt is equal to our x3, right? So, mark it as equation number A. And again, here, this x2 is equal to small x2. Again, differentiate it. So, this will be equal to x2 dot and dx2 by dt will give you, this is equal to our x4, right? So, mark it as equation number B here. So, finally, we had framed expressions for x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot and x4 dot as well. So, finally, these are our respective equations, right? Now, I am going to rewrite this expression in matrix form. So, when you write it in matrix form, we all know, right, how to represent it. So, here, respect to state variables, right? And here, this term is respect to that is here the differentiated form, here the normal form. So, again, look back at this equation. That is x1 dot is equal to x3. Only x3 is present. No x1, x2 and x4. Right. So, therefore, here the coefficient of x3 is 1. So, write it over here. 1. That is x1, x2 and x4 are 0. And again, consider x2 dot equal to x4. So, no x1, x2, x3. So, you see. In the place we are having simply zeros and finally coefficient of x4 is 1 which is written here right and here i am having x3 dot so coefficient of x1 is minus k by m1 it is written here and coefficient of x2 is plus k by m2 sorry plus k by m1 so it is written here and again coefficient of x3 is minus d by m1 no x4 so it is 0 right again when you consider this x4 dot so again the same thing k by m2 right and next one minus k by m2 and here no x3 x4 so it is marked as 0 right and plus again you see there is no there is no u term here and here also and here also finally i am having an u term in this final expression so here it is all the first three terms have no u term so they are represented as zeros and here 1 by m2 so which is multiplied by this u matrix right u is nothing but our input and next thing we are going to write matrix for output equation right so the displacement x1 and x2 are considered as outputs right so here we are equating x1 is equal to y1 and x2 is equal to y2 so when you write output equation in matrix form right so here we are having x1 x2 because these are the displacement right so here i am writing it as x1 x2 and here while framing expression you see here this contains even rather than writing it as y1 you just um, keep it as capital x1 and capital x2 okay it's better so here only x1 term so the coefficient of x1 is 1 so 1 the remaining terms 0 and here i am having only x2 so, in the place of x2, the coefficient of x2 is 1 and the remaining terms are 0 and which is multiplied with this x1, x2, x3 and x4, right. So, 
this is our this matrix is denoted as e and this matrix is denoted as f so finally e and f together forms the state model of the system right so here comes the end of the problem if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you